Basically, I'll just I'll end up and already covered this. This is the business process management I gave you examples of, but uh, what business process management, that term BPM, may be new to some of you, uh, but it's the process, it's taking business processes and automating them to the extent that you can. That can be alerting you when a certain criteria happen inside your county system. It can be uh, alerting you on uh, HR things. We've done, you can, can also send out things like, well, you can just read through them all, uh, we're using the business process management to, um, for the uh, part that we've done for Atlas. That's basically a, a BPM product that we're using on the back end to make that happen. So that you can basically be alerted to things without you having to do the manual reports or having you to uh, come in and during, did I remember to run that report? Well, we're going to send that report to you automatically based on the schedule. Uh, this, is a, this is big with the Fortune 500 companies, this kind of software is what they're moving towards so they can take the human person out of it and let them do something that's more productive than just basically running reports, double checking on this, just alert me when the time, I only want to be alerted and then <clears throat> uh, when I need to be rather than looking all the time. What we found, the other thing though that it does that's unique is that not only does it do alerts but based on criteria that you can define, it can go back and update your accounting system on the back end without you doing anything. Now that may scare the weebie jeebies out of you at first, right? What do you mean it's under, I'm not going to see it? You don't. It just does what it's supposed to do. So we have a client that doesn't use our insurance system that's in, I think it's in Alabama it is, but they have the, uh, they do index their, their insurance certificates in the paperless, but then they had to go, and we did this I think for CW Driver too, is that, no that was on lien releases, but on insurance they didn't want to go into, they still wanted in Timberline. So they index the insurance certificates into paperless, the back end program recognizes a new one and then pushes the data over the Timberline and updates the Timberline uh, insurance fields automatically. How long have we had this? Huh? I, I need that. How long have we had this? It's new. No. It's brand new. Oh, we just started using it with clean releases. Yeah, we did. Well, yeah, with CW Driver, you know, I'm going to say what you did with them. Uh, Kelly with CW Driver, when we, it's a story to be told, it's kind of, I'd like to tell stories every now and then. I've been known to do that. Is that when we sold paperless to CW Driver, uh, we talked about a lot of things to get it rolling, but we also talked about lean release tracking, we talked about insurance, and their uh, CFO is very particular about how she signs checks and the backup that they have to have. So it's not just good enough having the invoice in there to see that it was approved. We have to so show that we got all the lien releases to make the joint checks. We've got an Excel spreadsheet has to be there. And so they had to get all those lien releases scanned into paperless, right, to make that approval work. And then enter the indexes and then turn around and, and log into computer guidance and enter the same information. So we're doing the double work. We got the CFO to buy off on it, right? She finally accepted just doing this electronically. She was a tough lady <laughs> uh, to, to do it, but uh, it's been going on for about two years now that we got you guys on it. But then Kelly remembered that, remember when you talked to us, you came to us about May, June, she said, remember when you said that you could push that lien release information over to CGC so we don't have to do this in double work? And I said, yeah, but I don't really want to do it. No, I'm just kidding. So basically, uh, we found out how the backend database worked. We had to get a hold of some people to understand how to update it. Uh, but we finally got it done now, and they've been on it for, we installed it about, what, a month ago, two months ago? About two months. Yeah, and so what happens is now when they, when they uh, you know, the lien release information into paperless, it senses that new information and then puts, and then puts it in the back end over into uh, CGC without having to have any human intervention. And it's running 24-7. Saving us a lot of time. So, I don't know, I guess I... I get excited about stuff like this. I don't know about you guys, but little things make me excited, like, okay, we solved that problem. Now, who would ever thought of paperless as being able to solve that problem? I had to have that, right? And if Kelly hadn't probably brought it up and we hadn't been there at the right time, nothing would have happened because we wouldn't have even heard the problem. So, you know, that's why I like to be in the field. When Tanner's in the field a lot now, I'm in the field less. But when I hear clients having problems, my ticker starts going off thinking, how can we solve that? Is that something I haven't seen before? Is that going to be worth it or not? Uh, for them, it was worth it. 
uh, for me, we have a client, and I saw your client in Alabama does the same thing. We, uh, his only concern, he's kind of anal, like most accounting people are. Someone yeah. has to be. Yeah. <laughs> I always have to think of myself as kind of a cowboy account. I'm not that anal. As long as it's close, Ryan and I say, well, they, you know what, we have a, we have a very large um, tolerance. Close is good enough. Uh, is that uh, he wanted to know that it was being done. Well, good Lord, if I got this bunny rabbit running on my computer, how do I know it was really working? How do I know it was done? So what we do is we send him an email to tell him if it wasn't. The only thing that could happen that wasn't being done is that the service went down and it didn't run. So he has to be a little bit alert, but he's pretty good at being alert. So if he doesn't get that email every morning, he knows that something happened. Because we can't send him an email telling him that everything anything didn't happen because we can't read anything. <laughs> How's that go? Anyway. So uh, those are things that as you encounter, you think about what you're learning here today. That's what my whole goal was for this whole conference was uh, our time together was to get you guys to think beyond maybe what you thought you own. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're presenting today, you don't have to buy anything else. You own the software for the most part, what we're talking about. It's just basically understanding what the possibilities are, right? So, and you need a guy like Ryan Yakel, by the way. 